Well, as wildfires continue to rage in parts of Australia, at least three people are feared dead in a small town in the state of New South Wales. A huge fire engulfed the area, causing widespread devastation. Thousands fled to the beaches to escape the flames, but unfortunately, three people were not so lucky. Labeling wise, I'm having trouble because. Well, in another city in New South Wales, at least one volunteer firefighter has succumbed to his injuries and two others have suffered severe burns. This happened after their truck was rolled over by extreme wind. This brings the death toll to 10 this season, out of which three were volunteer firefighters. Well, at the moment, over 200 bushfires continue to burn across Australia and 60 new fires have started since midnight. Australia is prone to bushfires, but this fire season has ravaged the country in an unprecedented manner. Over 50,000 square kilometres of land has been charred in less than six months. A total fire ban is in place across many states of Australia and five emergency warnings have been issued in East Gippsland. The capital city of Canberra has also imposed a total fire ban for New Year's Eve celebrations. Canberra's decision comes amid a growing debate in Sydney whether its iconic New Year's Eve fireworks should be cancelled. Despite the push, Sydney's council has stated, and I quote, Cancelling them would have little practical benefit for affected communities, unquote. Well, joining us now live from Sydney in Australia is Peter Oxford, who is a prominent entrepreneur and a resident of uh, Sydney. Well, uh, Peter, thank you so much for uh, joining us on the show. Uh, first of all, if you can give us a sense of what is really happening on ground, we hear a lot about bushfires raging for several weeks now, lives being lost, and uh, the uh, volunteers as well as the administration fighting a long and hard battle. But what is really the situation on ground? How are the residents putting up with it? Well, it's, it's getting harder and harder. Um, living here in Sydney, which is such a big city, we're actually being affected by all the bushfires which are actually surrounding the city now. There's actually a lot of roads that are blocked, so a lot of residents can't leave or they're trapped. Um, it was quite distressing to see on the news this morning when we saw that that coastal town had people evacuating to the beach. Um, it's actually surrounded and authorities can't get in there to help those people. But we've just heard in the last hour that the fire danger has passed and the wind direction has changed. That's good news. Um, but living in the city, even though we're not seeing the fires, we are affected every day by them now. Like the smoke is just unbelievable. Right. Uh, Mr. Oxford, also there is a debate still raging over whether the iconic uh, uh, fireworks, New Year's Eve fireworks in Sydney should be cancelled, keeping in mind uh, the current crisis that Australia is facing. As a resident of uh, Sydney, what is your view on that? Well, I've been a resident here all my life and I've had fireworks every New Year's Eve and I actually got involved in the debate about three weeks ago and I said, if the fireworks aren't going to be cancelled, why don't we actually promote a donation to the firefighters and those who have been affected by the bushfires and, you know, even though there's going to be fireworks, use it as a different sort of platform. Um, I do understand why the council's saying they can't cancel them at this late stage. Um, but also there is a big bushfire threat and a fire danger around Sydney and let's just hope that it doesn't impact any of that as well. But it's just going to add to the smoke and people like myself, um, I've got cystic fibrosis which is a lung condition. Um, my breathing has been affected nearly every day. I've just had treatment in hospital and the ward was actually full of smoke one day and it actually affected my treatment. So. Living here in Sydney, we don't have clean air anymore. It's it's quite actually scary that we're living in a city that's affecting our health every day. Right, as you uh, as you told, there is no clean air right now, at least in uh, Sydney. So, how are the residents coping up with it? Well, we don't go out. Um, I wake up every morning. I look outside and I see if it's a clear day or not a clear day, and then actually deciding whether I have to stay indoors or I can actually go out and do things. Um, we've had more smoke days and more clear days in the last 40 days, I think. Um, it's actually, it's actually, no one's coping because this is not how we live. So seeing our, our air pollution on the Richter scale being so high is actually quite distressing for a lot of people. And the ambulances have been getting called out more often for people with respiratory problems than normal. People without respiratory problems are actually finding it difficult. 
Right. Uh, properties have been destroyed. Forests have been uh, wiped out because of uh, these bushfires. Uh, would you happen to know how people in other regions in Australia, which are worse affected than Sydney, like New South Wales, are coping with it? Would you have relatives or friends there who have uh, shared their experience with you so far? Um, I don't have any direct relatives or friends, but I've heard from people that um, they've lost their, their entire homes that they've lived in. And, you know, that's not that's not good because a lot of these areas you can't get insurance because you're in a bushfire area. So these people have lost everything because insurance won't cover it. I think the most distressing thing that we've all seen as city residents by the people in the country is actually seeing the wildlife being killed, like the koalas. Um, that's That was really distressing for us for a few weeks ago when we saw a koala which was rescued by a lady who saw it on the side of the road and went to a... a, a to get seek help but then it died a couple of days later which was really distressing for us um but just just seeing it on the news every day there's just every day there's more and more things happening and i flew over the fires a few weeks ago and it was just smoke all the way up to the queensland coast right and and bushfires are not something new to australia but this year it has been unprecedented uh, the intensity with which it has hit Australia. Uh, how long do you feel as a resident it will take for uh, uh, Sydney or for that matter other parts of Australia to recover from it this time? Well, I don't know. It's like until they get these fires under contain, to contain we're not going to get clean air. Um, it's like where's the next fire going to spring up? Um, I'm actually leaving Australia in a couple of weeks. I'm going to New Zealand and hopefully I'll get some relief for some air, but I'm going over there for work. Um, but it's just something we're not used to, but we're used to the bushfires and we do have a bushfire season. We're always prepared for them. But this year, because of the drought and lack of water and everything else that's compounded, it's just made this just even more exacerbated when it comes to what we're seeing on TV every day in the bushfires. It's just something in Australia is prepared for, but not to this extreme. Right. Uh, are you seeing that a lot around you? A lot of people trying to move out of uh, the region to uh, cope with this uh, situation right now? The only way out is to fly out of Australia. You, you, anywhere you go, there'll be smoke. So even if I went to Victoria, I went to Queensland, I'm going to be still affected by smoke. So someone like myself who does have her breathing problems, cystic fibrosis, the only way out is to leave the country, um, which I'm going to be doing in a couple of weeks. So, but you can't drive out. The roads are blocked when it gets to out of the city area. Most areas, you can't get down the south coast to the other areas. So we've been, try, we've been told by authorities to rethink our plans, our travel plans today. This has been the last few hours. Right. Uh, thank you, uh, Peter Oxford, for uh, joining us and sharing uh, that information with us, uh, trying, giving us a clearer picture of what the situation is really on ground and what the residents uh, in Australia are coping up with, with days and days of uh, bushfire raging now. And even as we speak, over 100 bushfires continue to rage.